You are listening to The Scope, Phelps Health Podcast, episode 24. Today, we're dispelling healthcare myths. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Paige Heitman. The Scope Podcast is produced on a regular basis and can be found by visiting phelpshealth.org. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your SoundCloud stream or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow Phelps Health on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into our show. Today, we have two really awesome guests, Dr. Nathan Ratchford, Chief Medical Officer of Phelps Health Hospital and a gynecologist with the Phelps Health Medical Group. We also have Dr. Brian Creedy, an ENT or ear, nose, and throat physician with the Phelps Health Medical Group and also the Medical Director of Surgery at Phelps Health Hospital. So welcome to our show today, guys. We're super excited to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. I know this is your first time in person, so welcome to our in-person show. (laughs) So today we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. I know a lot of people in our community already know you guys. So today we're discussing hospital myths, and I'm really excited about this because, as you guys know, rural healthcare often gets a bad rap. Let's go ahead and just kick it off with talking about how valuable rural healthcare is to communities. Dr. Creedy, I'll go yeah, yeah, sure. So for an area like Rala, we are you know an hour, hour and a half away from any of the large, larger medical centers in St. Louis or Springfield. So it's nice to have uh, a hospital in this area that can handle most of the healthcare issues and it prevents having to drive in an hour and an hour and a half both ways. Um, and it can be life-saving as well for uh, the emergency cases where you don't have time to drive that far. So it's extremely important uh, to serve, serve this area. You know, I'll ask you this too. We talked about this right before we started the show. You would argue that we're almost on the precipice of not being a rural hospital. What does that mean? I, w- I would agree. I would agree with that. I think that's a good point. We were talking about that earlier. So I think back to um, my training. I trained down in San Antonio. It's a large metropolitan area. A lot of the services we have there, we offer here. I wouldn't consider this a, a, a rural healthcare. I'd, I'd say we've got uh, state-of-the-art care and can handle, I'd say, 95% of uh, medical animals in this area here here in Rala. Yeah, that's really cool. I think a lot of people miss that. Um, Dr. Ratchford, do rural hospitals have the capacity to care for special cases? Well, so I was just kind of listening to Dr. Pretty's mm-hmm. answer on the, uh, you know, a rural health system. Mm-hmm. So, so we are a rural health system in that we are in a rural community and we serve a lot of rural communities around us. But if you really look at our setting, we're, we're an hour and a half away from Springfield, St. Louis, Columbia, and the, the services that we offer here are, they're on par with what you would see in those bigger communities. We just happen to be in a, in a rural community. And you, know, you talk to, uh, I'll credit Dr. Don James with this, you know, he talks about us being a metropolitan hospital in a rural setting. And I think that's very much true. I'd say that's probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned something that I thought is really cool to mention as well. We don't just serve the Phelps County area. We serve a six county region, right? Which is pretty huge whenever you think about how many people that actually serves. Yeah, you, you look at the uh, the different counties that touch Phelps County that are all within, you know, 30, 45 minutes to us. You look at the four yeah, that Dr. Creedy is very familiar with. and. Mm-hmm. The population that we serve, uh, I think it's in the mid 200,000. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's over 200,000. We pull from a large area. So. Now, how does that compare to larger hospital systems? Is that pretty comparable for like a metropolitan Well, it kind of depends on what you're talking about. If you look at, for example, like Columbia, they're probably larger than us. Like Columbia itself has just 100,000 people there around the hospital and their surrounding counties are probably a little bit larger. But, you know, St. Louis, Kansas City, Springfield, you're talking, you know, over a million people in each of those locations. So um, it's not quite as large as that, but they also have several hospitals in the area mm-hmm. to, to cover cover those locations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're the only hospital around. I mean, there's Texas County Hospital, right, in uh, Houston, but that's really it. Yeah, there's smaller hospitals. I mean, um, a, a patient in our community, they may be closer to one of those, but as far as the actual services that we might be able to offer here, in order to get similar services, they would have to drive to one of the tertiary facilities mm-hmm. in you know, Columbia or St. Louis, for example. Now, whenever you say that, it makes me think about our facilities. Are our facilities just as good as those larger organizations that you're talking about in St. Louis and Springfield? I, w- I would definitely say they are. Uh, we've got uh, you know robotic surgery that we can do here that you know oftentimes you think would only be offered in a larger mm-hmm. tertiary care center in, uh, in the city. We've got all the endoscopic uh, equipment that we need to do here, all the microscopes, all the equipment that needs to be done to do some fairly advanced cases. We have the uh, capability to do that. 
Well, and you know, with Dr. Creed and I, with our specialties, you know, surgery is near and dear to our hearts, but mm -hmm. we also have a, a robust cancer center. We have really robust imaging capabilities and we're tied to the Mountcrop Institute mm -hmm. out of St. Louis. Uh, our emergency room. It's a, it's a great service we provide to the community. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, really, if we, if we weren't here, it would mean traveling for those kind of things that we can do locally. Yeah, that's a huge distance. So you mentioned that surgery is near and dear to your heart. And I want to read this and then let's talk about sure. it. So in 2020, Phelps Health was recognized by CareChecks, an informational service of Quantros Incorporated, as among the top 10% in the nation for patient safety and overall hospital care, gastrointestinal care, general surgery, and major bowel procedures. Phelps Health was also recognized as being in the top 10% in the nation for medical excellence in gastrointestinal care, gastrointestinal hemorrhage, general surgery, major bowel procedures, and neurological care. That is a mouthful. <laughs> well, why do patients care about that? Why should we care? Well, I think it's like with anything. You want to know that you're getting quality, safe health care. Mm -hmm. um, and this just shows that, hey, we, we can provide the, the quality uh, and the outcomes that you would get at uh, you know, large facilities down in St. Louis. I think it's, it's a, a great thing to show, show our patients. You know, if I can make a comment, uh, hearing you read that out loud, I was thinking that I, I don't find that surprising. You know, I, the different surgeons that we work with, mm -hmm. we ENT, GYN, general surgery, urology, I, I, I go to these meetings with these other doctors that we have here, and it's, it's really humbling to get everybody in the same room, the talent that's in that room, the experience, and, you know, definitely patients care about mm -hmm. good outcomes and quality care, and they want to make sure they're in a safe setting, and, and I think that's what that is measuring, and absolutely being around the, the staff in the OR, the facilities that we have, we definitely provide that level of care. So how has our technology increased over the years to better serve our patients? Um, I can just speak from my experience mm -hmm. and the experience I've had in the, the operating room. I started here full time, uh, I believe back in 2000 and uh, would have been 2016, somewhere mm -hmm. around in there. Um, as an ENT surgeon, there's very specialized equipment you need to do that. So just since my time here, I know uh, we've purchased a brand new uh, ear microscope to do some more of the advanced middle ear surgeries. Uh, we have image-guided technology for our sinus surgery so that we know where our instruments are as we're operating around the, the skull mm -hmm. base and, and the eyes and so forth. Uh, we've added the robotic surgery uh, capabilities uh, just in the time that I've uh, been here. So it continues to grow and we continue to look at new technologies that uh, can provide some of this quality care um, like we described. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What about from your perspective, um, as an OBGYN, how have those services grown since you've been here? Yeah, so I think probably the best example in my world is the robotic surgery. Um, since we've been able to offer that, mm -hmm. there's patients that even just 10 years ago, I would have had to have kept them in the hospital for a couple of nights before they left. Mm -hmm. And now it's routine. I, I do their surgeries on a like a Friday morning. They're on their way home by lunchtime. Um, I get people all the time from a, a hysterectomy that just 10 years ago, would put them out of work for six weeks. Now I get pe people to go back to work within a week or so. It's amazing. Yeah, wow. So it kind of sounds like the quality of care, even for patients, has just like drastically increased. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which is super cool because like you said, they're not going to have to go up to St. Louis and then have that drive after that surgery. Like they can just do it here and then take their 10 to 20 minute drive home and then right. they're done. Well, yeah. and we mentioned, I think one of the misnomers of rural healthcare is like, hey, you're not quite as advanced as some of these larger hospitals in the city. And that's that's not uh, not the case. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, I always think rural healthcare people around here we all care about each other so much, we often have a hard time bragging on ourselves. And I think that also happens very often. Whenever we do something really great, we don't always say, hey, we're amazing. Right. Well, and I think, you know, speaking as a physician, mm -hmm. looking at other physicians, hu humility is something we like to see in each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're not cavalier, we're, yeah. we're well-trained, we know what we can do safely. We, we know the limits of what we can do here, and, and that's an important thing too. You know, talking about the limits of what you can and can't do as a um, physician, let's talk about the Hippocratic Oath. What if there are tertiary care that you can't provide? Do you still see that patient? Um, you want to go first? Yeah, I, I would say for sure. Um, you know, if I've got somebody who I'm seeing in the clinic and whatever it might be, it's just not something that can be safely offered mm -hmm. here. They, they require a 
level of care that's so specific and unique, you would only see it at a tertiary facility. I'm still happy to see that patient. And, and what I can offer her is I can put in the referral to the right people and help guide that care. Maybe they have to go have surgery. Maybe it's something else. They go see that specialist. And then they can come back here and I can help manage whatever follow-up is necessary, imaging, blood work, whatever that might be. I, I still think our local Phelps Health physicians mm -hmm. play an important role in that care. Well, not only that, um, I know from my experience, I've got a lot of collaboration with uh, the folks down at um, Siteman Cancer Center in St. Louis at Washington University. Um, I know them on a first name basis. I can call them up if there's any problems for, for larger head and neck cancers that require specialized uh, surgery that's only offered at a curtain, uh, you know, certain spots across the country. We have the ability to to send them there, get them taken care of, and then, you know, even though they have their care there, a lot of their follow up can be done here, so they don't have to drive down to the city, you know, every week for for post surgery follow ups and so forth. We can we can offer that service here as well, which really makes a difference too, because then you get to know that patient on a first name basis. Absolutely, and I'm here to tell you that really makes a difference. Yeah, and you know, something you just said that made me think. Um, I think. I think a lot of patients that are not super familiar with how healthcare works, there's a lot of mysterious things that happen in the background. And, you know, Dr. Creedy, you said you trained in San Antonio. I, I trained in St. Louis before I came to Rolla. I, I'm still on a first name basis with all those specialists. I've got all their, their cell phones in my phone. And mm -hmm. uh, this just happened last week. I've got a patient that they're right there in the office. I know it's something that they need. I can pick my phone up and say, hey, Here's what's going on. Can I send this patient to you? Um, unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, healthcare these days is super complicated, and that's okay. But it 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 it's still it's nice to have that human touch where I can go that extra distance to mm -hmm. help coordinate those things. You know that brings up a really good question too. How do our providers at Phelps Health? How do you guys continue to educate yourselves, attend conferences, to really be able to provide better care for for patients here in our community? So from my standpoint, uh, board certification is a big part of uh, making sure you're up to date mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, the latest technology and so on and so forth. So there's uh, a process called maintenance of certification. I'm sure it's the same yep. with you, Nathan. We, we've got to do a certain amount of education courses, mm -hmm. uh, go to a certain amount of conferences uh, to keep our uh, board certification up to date and, and mm -hmm. current. Um, we offer courses at the hospital um, as well. There's things like uh, tumor board. Oftentimes, uh, we get together with the radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, mm -hmm. and oftentimes we mentioned a collaboration with Siteman Cancer Center. Oftentimes, their providers will be there um, as well. So it's it's a it's a continuum of uh, always improving yourself and, and staying up to date. And I'm sure that's the way with with the rest of the physicians in the hospital. You know, another thing is we we have a long history of teaching medical students at Phelps. Oh right, yeah, I forgot about and that. I'll, t I'll tell you what, I, I really, I'm a, I'm a smarter doctor when I have a medical student with me because they really push you to keep your A game going and make sure you are on top of things. Um, you know, Dr. Creedy mentioned board certification. So for people that aren't familiar, uh, every specialty has its own board, which mm -hmm. is an organization that ba basically exists to prove that they are adequately trained and they're an expert in their field. And we, we require board certification of our physicians. And then there's a lot of things that happen in the background that people don't recognize and realize that we have. Like we have, uh, we have peer review, which is where when things don't go as planned, we, we monitor and trend those things. We intervene if we, if we need to, which mm -hmm. is uncommon. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, like you mentioned, those, um, those criteria that uh, the 10% thing with surgery, we have a lot of quality organizations within the organization that monitor things like infection rate and uh, return to the OR, things like that. And then here most recently, as I think you've covered on the scope, mm -hmm. we just instituted uh, Epic here at Phelps Health, mm -hmm. which has even more tools to where we can track quality and safety measures. And well, I think those sorts of things um, help us realize that, hey, we're, we're not much different, if at all, from some of these large facilities because we're right there yep. with them on all these quality measures. That leads right into what I was going to ask. So our, our providers and physicians across the board are on par with everybody else, correct? There's no really difference, right? Yeah, Epic is the premier electronic medical record 
all, all the things that we've been talking about that we have in the facilities, mm -hmm. uh, a, a provider, a, a physician, a surgeon in our facility looking at another organization, they're not going to notice any difference. I, I really don't think so either. I mean, I agree. I'd, I'd say our physicians are on par um, with, with any provider anywhere. Now, we may not be able to offer some of that very, very specialized mm -hmm. care, but we've got, like I said, avenues to pursue those and get patients taken care of. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, there's some specialties like, you know, cardiothoracic surgery, right. neurosurgery, things like that, things that are so specialized. Mm -hmm. You, you couldn't really uh, practice in a setting like this. There's just not enough patients to pull from, to stay busy and, mm -hmm. and, and on top of that. So some, some things you're only going to see yeah. at, at large metropolitan right. areas. But I would like to add, I said, I've seen a lot of growth just in the time that I've been here. So, I mean, there's, there's potential for, for this down the road depending on how things Yeah, absolutely. Goes. So talking about that growth, our medical group has grown exponentially over the course of, you know, since Phelps Health, Phelps Health has been open. Why has our medical group needed to grow so much? I, I think it just shows that there's a great need uh, in this area. There's a lot of people that live in, live in this uh, location. And before, like I said, they were going to other places, going to St. Louis, going to Springfield. I think it just emphasizes the, you know, the need that we have here mm -hmm. and it's a need that we're, we're able to serve. Mm -hmm. You know, another question that gets brought up too is some people are very hesitant to go and see a nurse practitioner, a family nurse practitioner, a physician assistant, because they feel like they are lesser than maybe a physician or an MD or a DO or, you know, whatever it is. Are our family nurse practitioners and nurse practitioners, all of those other types of providers, can they provide the same quality of care whenever it's like in a family physician type of setting? Yeah, so every component, if you will, mm -hmm. of healthcare, whether it's a physician, the, the term for what you're describing are mm -hmm. advanced practice providers. So that's yeah. like nurse practitioners, physician assistants, certified uh, nurse midwives, mm -hmm. uh, RNs, MAs, LPNs. We, we all have what's called scope of practice, mm -hmm. which is based on your training, the license that you re receive from the state, this is the level of care that you can provide. So true, um, you know, to, to use your example and your question of physician assistant, they're not going to take you to the operating room and perform surgery on you, mm -hmm. but the care that they are, are trained to provide is, is definitely the same quality as you'd receive from a physician. It's just, um, you know, a different model, a different focus than you might receive. Mm -hmm. I know, Dr. Creedy, you have. Uh, yeah, I both. actually have both. We've got both a PA and a nurse practitioner mm -hmm. that work in my office. Um, she's been with uh, Candace Chapman. She's been with me for three, I guess, almost four years now. Mm -hmm. um, and like Nathan said, yeah, she's not going to go take someone to the operating room, but she's going to uh, see patients in clinics. She sees a lot of my post-op patients and manages a lot of the things when I'm not in the office. I trust her 100%. She does a, does a fantastic job. And should there be something that she's not comfortable with, she never has a problem with getting in touch with me. And that's typically how it works. So um, absolutely, they can provide a, a very high level of care. And in some of the more specialized services like ENT or in the cancer center, those nurse practitioners and PAs are oftentimes more educated than you know some of the you know primary care family practice arts just because that's what they do all day and they're a little bit more focused on that. So. Yeah, so there's really, there's not a difference in quality of care. The quality of care that you're going to get at Phelps Health is going to be a really great standard. And I think sometimes that's what gets questioned whenever somebody is going in to see like a um, an FNP or an NP or even a PA. They go in and they see PA and they're like, oh, I don't want to see them. I want to see my doctor. So how do you handle maybe a patient that comes in like that? How do you have that type of conversation? I think that's a personal choice um, for the for the patient. I'm not going to you know deny them the ability to see yes. me if that's what they insist on. But I also try to emphasize that look, you know, this nurse practitioner, this PA, they're very well trained. I mm -hmm. trust them. I would have no trouble with my family seeing them. Uh, and as long as you're okay with that, I think you're going to get taken care of. If not, I'd be happy, happy to see you. And that's typically how I approach that. And you know, I think one of the things that we do really well here at Phelps Health is that all of our APPs are part of a care team. So, so absolutely, like ENT allergy right. is a good example. Oncology is a good example. Surgery. The 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 physicians that we have that have APPs that work with them. They're around them all the time. They they know what their their skill set is. And if, if a patient was to say, I'm scheduled with this person, but I want to see the physician, mm -hmm. that can certainly be accommodated. But I, I think you're seeing that less and less. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, patients, they, they form, you know, uh, relationships with these providers. And I, I, I think it's a good care model. Yeah. Overall. I know, um, like I said, from my experience, Candace has a group of patients that actually prefer to see her, which I'm completely fine with. Yep. So that kind of brings up another question um, about the importance of our care teams. What makes Phelps Health so awesome is that we have this whole scope of care. So you don't just have a doctor here. You have like a, a nurse that can call and check in with you. You have this whole scope of care. Let's talk about that for a minute and talk about how that kind of sets Phelps Health apart. You know, there's there's good evidence that the more engaged the patient is in their care, the better care they're going to get. And I think that one of the things we do really well at Phelps Health mm -hmm. is, you know, we're, we're in this smaller community, we're neighbors with these patients, and with that familiarity comes a more open dialogue on how to best provide care. We've already mentioned with Epic, there's tools built in that to help communicate. And once you start building these care teams and the nurse does this, the physician does this, the whomever does this, plug the patient into that conversation as well, they, they become part of the team. I think we do a really good job with that. Yeah, I don't think we're necessarily set up differently than most other places, but it's a more intimate setting. Like I said, I'm pretty involved in the community, so I know a lot of my patients on a first name basis, and uh, you know, they, they feel comfortable coming up and we say, hey, you know, Dr. Reader, okay. hey Brian, how's it going? And uh, I think that makes a big difference, and it's, it adds a personal touch that you don't always get at some of the bigger places. Yeah, I think that does make a, a unique difference at Phelps Health because you can go to St. Louis and have a procedure, and then you don't go back to St. Louis for six months, right? right? Okay. Whereas at Phelps Health, we live around here. So whenever you see a patient, you might also be at that that ball game or you might be in the grocery store. Yep. That is a big differentiating factor. So something else that we have at Phelps Health, and you kind of alluded to this before, you had mentioned Malacrot and Sightman Cancer Center. So those are partnerships that we have at Phelps Health. What, what are the importance of having those different partnerships? So like with Malincrot, so Malincrot is a large radiology group out of St. Louis. They serve as many hospitals just like ours. We have local radiologists. We have two of them that are excellent that are on site virtually every day reading most of our imaging. You know, we have, I, I wish I could tell you numbers off the top of my head, but all of the CTs and MRIs and ultrasounds and x-rays that come through, they're there reading them. But then also with that relationship with Malincrot comes, uh, you know, Dr. Creedy might do a better job at this, but there's some unusual disease that there, there, there might be some specialist radiologist that can hop on the system. We, we've got a connection with them and they can look at stuff right then and there. And you get that higher level of imaging read that you might not get with a mm -hmm. general radiologist that's on site. Now, what about Sightman Cancer Network? What does that partnership look like? So it's kind of, it's a, it's a fantastic partnership for, for a couple of reasons. Um, our cancer center is able to handle uh, radiation treatment, chemotherapy on most patients with that without uh, too much uh, difficulty. Some of the surgeries are a little bit more complex. The recovery re requires kind of a higher level of care. So from my mind and my experience, that's really been the biggest advantage is being able to uh, send them down there for the larger surgeries that we just don't have the ability to do here. And then the rest of their care can be provided through our, our radiation oncologist or medical oncologist. That's a very time consuming and a very can at times be a very long treatment course and to have to drive down to St. Louis every day for something like that would be uh, very problematic and then add to that some of the side effects of these treatments and you can see, you know, the benefits of, of having something like that set up. Awesome. So something else that I wanted to make sure that we mentioned is primary care because that's something that we always try to push at Phelps Health because if you can get in and establish a primary care provider or a physician, then that really sets you on a path to take your health care into your own hands maybe prevent some of these things that could happen later on in life, like um, diabetes or like heart attack strokes, because it gives you a better insight into your health, or at least that's been my experience. So why is primary care access really important for rural residents? Well, for primary care, that's really the entry point mm -hmm. for a lot of people into health. It, it, it may be preventative, like what you're talking yeah. about, healthy person, doesn't have any disease, but they're being screened for things that might come up. And then when things do come up, we're, we're working with these primary care providers all the time. Just like we were talking about um, sending patients to a tertiary facility and we're all on a first name basis. 
the primary care doctors and the specialists in our community work Absolutely. the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they work pretty closely together, which again is super cool and something I think pretty unique to Phelps Health. So we're kind of nearing the end of our show, but I want to ask both of you guys the same question. Why do you care so much about rural health care and what keeps you here? Well, um, I've got some ties to this area. It's not just rural health care in Raleigh. I mean, I grew up not too far from here, so I've got, I've got family close, close up. I've got some roots in this area. I mean, I know the people around here. I, I love this community and I, I love being here. That's, that's, why, that's, I mean, that's why I stay. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you. Yeah, for me, I grew up in southwest Missouri down by Joplin in a much smaller town than Rolla. <laughs> but for my my wife's family being in Illinois, Rolla just happened to be a good fit for us location-wise. And we wanted to be in a smaller community for our family. I've got two small kids. And I wanted to provide something similar to what I grew up with for my kids. And the, the fact that I can... I can have that family life while still practicing the level of medicine that I want to provide. It's a win-win. Great. Thank you both so much for being on our show today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much for tuning into The Scope. If you liked our show and would like to know more, check out phelpshealth.org.